<laughs> hey guys, how is it going? Well, I um, I thought I'd better try and keep up with this whole uh, promise of doing a 30 day challenge. And um, I actually must say, I really am loving the theme that the guys are putting out for us to get back into our flow and be talking and sharing again. And um, <laughs> we've left it this late because we've literally been on the uh, table today getting a few tattoos done, which was super fun, but a lot of hours. So we just been to dinner and we thought we may as well quickly knock this on the head and have a discussion around receiving. And we, we had a discussion today while we were waiting for a few things and while we were chatting away with our awesome tattoo artist, by the way. And, um, yeah, so I think received everything on the sofa. No, you've got this so far. Doing amazing. Thanks. So <laughs> receiving was a really cool point because I was like, mm, that's really interesting. And I, I noticed a lot with myself and with friends and with clients and family, receiving can be such a hard thing that people don't allow for multiple reasons. And I really love the point you gave today about that story. Um, but I think the, the first point is like, can you actually truly receive? And how many of us actually know what that even looks like? And, and what I think is most people will unconsciously not even realize that they're blocking themselves from receiving it. And that can be from such a multitude of different ways and reasons why. Like, I find that a lot of us will block ourselves from receiving because we seem to think that um, us receiving makes us the weaker person. Like, I know many people have seen receiving as a part of, um, oh, what's the word? Um, uh... Well, it's being humble in a lot of ways. And I feel like, this is probably the opposite to what society has told us. You know, we've been told from kids it's better to give than to receive. But as soon as you start receiving, it sort of enables or if you don't accept or receive joyfully, it, it denies somebody else the opportunity and the joy of giving. But not only within that fact, I feel like receiving has that humbleness implied. You should be able to accept and, and consider yourself the same as or or the same as everyone else, but giving, when we do this quite often, people do it from a place of ego or feeling better than or have the opportunity to do more. And there's nothing wrong with giving, I don't feel. But at the same time, if you're giving someone something, it should be nice to be able to give them a hug and say, thank you for this opportunity to be able to help you in a certain way. So it takes any ego out of that situation also. Mm. Oh yeah, that's what I was going to say. There's blackmail. I've seen a lot of people have seen like receiving as a as like this whole like if I receive from you, therefore then I owe you because you've then gifted me something that gives you the hierarchy or the the vantage point because you've given to me. So there's I've noticed over time multi the the belief system shift from being in gratitude and receiving to being this whole like oh if I receive from you now I owe you now I have to buy mm. you something now I have to give you something in return or now you're better than me. Rather than actually just humbly, beautifully receiving that. Uh, and I see happening a lot with things like with compliments. Like how many times have you seen, hey guys, thanks for jumping on. Um, how many times do you see people take get compliments and they're like, oh no, but I, and, and they'll deflect it because they don't want to, they, they're not willing to receive because receiving makes them feel uncomfortable because ultimately then I feel people are then mm -hmm. faced with this whole. Well, well, yeah. <laughs> we were talking about this the other day, particularly with, a lot of women blokes are probably better at receiving compliments and help than that whereas with women if you say oh i love your hair there oh i've hardly done it today oh that's a lovely dress oh this old thing i found it in the in, in the bottom of the drawer so it's kind of deflecting which doesn't encourage people to do it more or to make you feel better you kind of come out there with that i really don't deserve this sort of feeling which if somebody's giving you something like that they're doing it from a place of love and for, for from kindness mm genuinely with nothing expected in return but when you don't receive that joyfully it kind of makes people not want to do that more than they're already doing it as well so mm, it's a double-edged sword it's mm. a double-edged sword because ultimately the inner child of all of us wants to receive wants to be playful wants to be valued wants to be um showered with with affection and love but it's our conditioning and our, our traumas that disable us from actually honorably and playfully receiving it, which then creates a beautiful unionship and a beautiful connection and all the things that we really ultimately want, but this internal self-sabotage and these stories that we've played out to keep ourselves stuck in our traumas and our triggers and our beliefs really has got a lot greater grasp on us than many of us are willing to admit, I think. Um, I think receiving also then trickles down to things like wealth. Receiving... And appreciating wealth, most of us have gotten into these 
um, stories, beliefs, patterns that when we receive money, because we don't have a belief and a, an honorable system of receiving wealth from whatever source it might come from, a multitude of people won't appreciate it and then we'll throw it around. Yeah, well, and devalue, it. It, devalue their own time, I think, is, is probably a hard point that a lot of us are guilty of not valuing your time in the correct way. So that mm. when you receive gifts, when you receive money, whatever it happens to be, or if you're doing really well in life, quite often a lot of us, I'm guilty, of going, do I actually deserve this? Do mm. I actually deserve to be in this position I'm in? And, you know, there's a, there's a point of that that definitely keeps us on track, staying that little bit humble, but I feel like, yeah, we do deserve it. If you have worked for the lifestyle that you've got, you've manifested, you've created it, whatever it is, we're all ultimately responsible for wherever we are in our life. Mm. And I feel like the point is, is, life's given you back if you put an effort and you've received it receive it joyfully own it own that you are wherever you are if you've just bought a new car and you've worked hard for it own it tell people about it be it not not from Celebrate a place it. of ego but but you know what i i, I work for this i deserve it yeah. i'm happy to have it and receive it from the universe not just from wherever it's come from and sometimes people give you things just taking it on joyfully and being grateful for the opportunity to receive it as well then that that keeps you humble but it also doesn't deny anything or anyone else the well keeps the, the it keeps the universal energy flowing i mean many of us say that we want more finances more wealth more abundance more things but once we get it we then do everything in our power to give it away and to uh undervalue it to underappreciate it um and so therefore it, it then stops the the flow the universe wants to give us flow wants to give us all the abundance and support that we need and then when we get it we don't have that self-value and that self-worth if we're not keenly attuned to catching ourselves in those in those moments of self-sabotage then again the flow stops and then we get into the despair and then we get into the, the poor energy and then we get into this space of um, the, the 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 rat race or the hamster wheel where it's we have then we ban then we get rid of it then we don't have it then we have to start earning it again and it, it's something that ninety eight percent of humans are really quite well stuck in it and there's not many that aren't um, limiting beliefs too there's there's that whole point of limiting yourself and not accepting the good things that come because you don't feel like you deserve but it's a pattern that you start from a young age of. No, no, let everyone else go first. Let everyone else go first. And I'm, I'm very good at doing that myself. So no, no, you go first. Where it's sometimes it's nice just to own it and it's really good to be able to say, I can take this space. This is my space. Mm. We're here to take up all the space on this planet. That's what we're here for. Mm. I think the other spot is in, re in relationships, right? So we have relationships where, I mean, this is something we've discussed in, in a whole host of different ways, is in relationships, and the feminine they might come in at that and say oh there's no good people out there there's no good opposite sex out there because they're all x y blah 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 and ultimately it's quite often the fact that we want these the, these partnerships but we refuse to drop our damage we refuse to drop our armor we refuse to drop our story and our, our boulder dash that that um we, we so put up the budget <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, is that we refuse to drop this facade because the fear of not having the, the story and the pain that we know is that we then are in a space of being in total vulnerability because we don't know what's coming next. And that can be really freaking scary for a lot of us. I know that we've both gone through these phases in our life where we've gone, I don't know if I can drop that protective ego mechanism, but I also know that I'm sick to death of being in this pain because I know this pain and this pain is safe. And I understand that the, the truth, the love, the glory and the relationship that I really want is actually over there where it's really uncomfortable, where it's really scary, where I don't know what I can do and should do with myself in this space to get past it. But I also don't know if I want to try anything new because holy shivers, I don't know if I'm equipped to deal with that. But the truth is, no one knows. Well, the best things start outside the comfort zone. Not a lot of good things or growth has started within the comfort zone. The, there's a balance there as well, and I think every single thing we do comes back to balance. Mm. Receiving, giving, doesn't matter what it is, wherever you are in your life, you know, there's, there's not a whole lot of, there's a lot more growth that's come from uh, scarcity or from, you know, doing things, doing having hard times that it does come from privilege, that being said. There's absolutely no need to put yourself through hard times if you don't have to. You can learn from every situation and grow with that balance. So I feel like in this instance, finding your balance, finding that point of if sometimes you're in that spot of 
receiving more so than, than giving sometimes. It's just nice to just say, you know what, appreciate this. And when it's available to me, I will pay it forward. Mm. I will help, I will do things. But sometimes we're just not in that position to be giving all the time. And sometimes, and again, we're denying others the opportunity to give. Mm. We're all in that spot. And I think that's, I'm trying to teach my kids that give and help everywhere you damn well possibly can. Because I tell you what, knowing that you've done as much as you can for everyone else, if sometimes life's not so favourable on you, you don't mind so much being able to come to somebody else and say, I need a hand up, I need a hand out, I need whatever it happens to be, mm. being able to receive that joyfully when you put the effort in in the first place and know that you've done everything you possibly could. So I feel like all of this stuff comes from a good place of balance mm. and finding that can really, really change the, your perspective and, and also your life can be greatly th- improved. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that can come from the space of, and I know, like, we're talking about people not wanting to receive from other people. You have to remember what goes around comes around. There will be times in our lives when we are rich and abundant and we're able to give more than we, we can tomorrow, which is freaking amazing. And then, you know what, the next week, the next month, we may not be in such an abundant space. And we all know it feels freaking amazing when you can give, when you're in a space of love and connection and abundance where you can give. It makes the person feel better or feel 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 wholesome, feel loving, feel con- able to con- contribute uh, to other people around them. Doesn't mean they're always going to be able to do that. So maybe remember that when someone's giving you something, it's beautiful. It's an equally beautiful act to receive with balance and honor because you're giving that person as much as they're giving you ultimately. Definitely, definitely. Because what goes around comes around, and, and if we can all do our part in being balanced and and knowing that it all comes with ebbs and flow, then we're going to be in a better space no matter what as a community, as a as a as a whole. Because we, we do remember that what goes around comes around. So I've always loved the um paying it forward and and going to cafes and leaving money for someone else to have a free coffee and things like that. Those sorts of things are bloody amazing. Like that's the way the world needs to move it and and go with the flow and go with abundance and creating a, a different perspective in the world. That's what true abundance and true honour and true receiving is all about. 100%. 100%. And I feel like in a lot of cases, you can never outgive a billionaire. This is this is the point. You know, like we're not trying to outgive in any way. It's not a competition. It's, it's not a competition, exactly. And if you've got someone that wants to continuously help, let them help you. That's what they want to do in a lot of these cases, but joyfully and gratefully. And say, I really appreciate this help out. Maybe you can never help out a billionaire. Maybe you just can't. Um, but at the same time. But their love language may be giving us the other, oh, another diversion of this is, um, you know, then you come down to love languages. You know, some people may actually, their love language may be giving gifts. And by denying them giving, denying their, their ability to give you gifts, maybe denying a natural, beautiful part of their. Uh, persona and their 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 love language and by you being there and receiving you may be giving back to them in ways that they never thought were possible because they're it's not they're, they're not capable of that so remembering things like love languages receiving is actually a highly important part of that um, so remembering that um, everyone's love language is different and your just because they're giving to you in this way doesn't mean your presence, your humor, your your time, your energy, your cooking for me, like all these sorts of things. I went through a long, lot of time where I had no money and I was very badly off, very poorly off. And so, at times, the best I could do was do a dinner party and have people over, um, and have um, and and be able to gift the joy of connection and food because that's all I was able to afford. And for some that might be a lot, and for some that might be not much at all. They may think that that's a, a pittance in a gift. But every person has a love language. So no matter what a person is giving, it would be great to see everybody wandering around with awareness and curiosity of how much they can be open and willing to receive from each other rather than being closed off from connection and communication with each other. It would be such a beautiful space in the water if we could see that shift and see people really just being more open and aware and willing to connect with each other rather than questioning and um, uh, putting conditions on interactions with each other and what giving and receiving really should look like. It's more like, can we just shift that completely and have everyone just be more open and loving and communicative and willing to accept each other as they are? Sounds pretty, pretty loving to me. Oh. <laughs> Have a good one.
I'll get to that, guys. 30 day challenge. I'm getting my shoes and this back together and back out of line. And this cute little thing to bring in a few people to watch as well. So I thought, you know, work with what you've got, right? <laughs> <laughs> Love you all and um, look forward to more conversations.